Let's bring on our uh, our special guest for the evening, Jason O'Brien. Of course, a lot of us know that Jason O'Brien has his own blog talk radio show called Oscar Oscar, which I am proud to contribute to every so often. Uh, but he is also a film director, and his new work, titled Cuddle, a documentary, is uh, just about to be unleashed upon home entertainment audiences on DVD, I believe. December 1st, I think, is the, the date. Let's bring him on to tell us more about it. Hey, Jason. <laughs> well, hey, guys. Wait, did I hear this right? Dean's already started drinking. Is that so I can start the drinking now? <laughs> yeah, you can start. Yeah, Jason. Well, Jason. I, I, will, I will be in, in with full uh, disclosure. I do have a little bit of uh, bourbon in it. Oh, ah, <laughs> okay. How else did you, Dean? How else could you tolerate talking to me without alcohol? I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I do it I almost mean, every week. But I mean, the alcohol I mean, does help grease the wheels I mean, a little bit. I mean, I, I, I can only tolerate myself with alcohol, okay? So, I mean, you know, let's, let's, let's make that very well, clear. But. So... So we're yeah, all joined together because, you know, we're going to discuss the movies we've seen lately and then movie news, do our regular roundtable thing. But we wanted to start by spotlighting your film. It, it comes out December 1st. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, December 1st on DVD, and you can also stream it online uh, through Vimeo right now. And it's supposed to be through, like, some additional channels, but I don't know what those are yet. How do you get to Vimeo? I mean, what is what does that entail? Because I've seen people do this, but, mm-hmm. I mean, do you get metrics? Well, because I was actually going to look at Vimeo for self-distribution when it was taking a while for the uh, the distribution deal to get negotiated, and I mm-hmm. wasn't sure if it would go through or not. So I'd, I'd been reading a lot about Vimeo for self-distribution, and it looks like, it's, it looks like one of the best options for independent filmmakers to mm-hmm. sell their own work because you basically get 90% of all the revenues that come in, um, which is one of the best cuts you're going to get, I think, with any kind of – self distribution right. and yeah that Vimeo has great metrics and you know stuff like that so you can see and a lot of what's quality. going on. And terrific mm-hmm. yeah I was going to say it you know I have gotten so frustrated with YouTube over over the years now and Vimeo is like the best I've seen for quality and you know none of the ad crap and you know things mm-hmm. like that and you know so it's a great avenue now for independent right. filmmakers to get distributed. But but your film your film is actually being properly dis dis, dis- Distributed. Yes. I, I knew. I, yeah. I knew I'd come out with it. Oh, uh, yeah. You finally got it out. There. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We finally. I got uh, a distribution deal for it, so now they'll be actually handling the the Vimeo setup and all that. And you know, it's kind of a mutual marketing deal. We're kind of both kind of promoting it, but it's nice to have like an actual distribution company behind it, where I don't have to feel like I've got the whole crux of the marketing, you know, to have to do. So. Right. So yeah. That's good. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the content of the film. Cuddle, yes. which I think is an especially important film uh, that could be meaningful for a lot of people, especially in this day and age, as we've seen this past weekend with such tragedy in the news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me, what what is Cuddle? What is the concept here? Well, it started basically, I, I thought it was going to be just about like a short film about cuddle parties, because I had heard about these cuddle parties that had been going on, and I had a friend here in Birmingham that was facilitating them and was trying to get me to come to one for a number of years, and I had no idea what it was. Like, they would tell me, like, a cuddle party, and I just had this vision of I'd walk in and I was just going to be immediately mobbed in a big cuddle puddle or something by a group of people. You know, so I had no idea what it was. So a couple years later, when she asked me again to go to one, you know, then I kind of, I was looking at it from more perspective of, you know, there, there should probably be a film about this. And I did some research and saw that no one had made a film about it, and I was like, well, this sounds like something pretty interesting. I started to talk to people and ask them, and they would say, yeah, I've never heard of a cuddle party, and you know, but I'm immediately fascinated. They would start asking all these questions, and so I was like, well, that that's, gives me enough impetus right there. That's, you know, I felt if I could actually show it on film, you know, then people could actually kind of see what one is like. And as soon as I attended one, I realized it was completely different from what my perception of it was. And mm-hmm. I think that's what a lot of people... You know, when you when you say a cuddle party or you hear about these cuddle businesses opening up, you know, they, they have a perception about it. Oh, something sexual must be going on behind closed doors. Um, you know, right. but once you actually go to one, uh, you know, you, you start to see that it's really almost like a workshop. You're really learning tools about touch and even communication and things like that. And, and it just opened up this whole host of, of, like, wonderful things to kind of learn from it. And so the film itself is really just a look inside – uh, these cuddle businesses and cuddle parties where you actually get to see them for what they are. Like you'll see, you know, a couple of cuddle sessions and you'll see an actual cuddle party kind of from start to finish, which kind of 
structures the film, um, you know, to really to really see what they're like. What happens to the human species when we're denied touch? Because this is something I'm going through right now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet all three of us are. <laughs> I, I, I can't speak for Jason, but uh, but you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just depends on when you ask me, Dean. It's like <laughs> no, it's well. That's been, I think, such a an, kind of an eye-opening thing is that you know so many people are kind of deprived of that kind of regular touch, and I think that's why we're seeing so many of these kinds of businesses sprouting up where people will actually pay, you know, to have that connection uh, with people. And, you know, so it, it is like a need that we just kind of forget about, you know, or at least a lot of people do. And what I love to see is that there are so many people that really want to kind of bring us back to that. Because not only are most of these people, like, facilitating these cuddle parties and cuddle businesses, but they're also doing tons of different workshops on, you know, looking at touch in, in much more grown-up adult ways, you know, understanding mm-hmm. that there is touch that is non-sexual, um, you know, which I think a lot of people just can't get past. Like, they just can't imagine, you know, touching somebody that they might be attracted to or someone of the opposite sex and sharing something like that without it being sexual. And it reminds me of the early days of, like, massage when people thought that was going to be something that, you know, was going to be sexual and now it's a legitimate therapy, which is what I think so many of these cuddle businesses really want to achieve. You know, they want to be as legitimate as massage, basically. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up in in terms of therapeutic, uh, being therapeutic, Mm -hmm. because... I mean, it does give you a sense of belonging and connection oh, yeah. to others, which is something mm-hmm. that is in our fragmented world. It's very rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's very rare that people even know their neighbors or or you, it, we seem to keep a distance from each other, even though in many ways we're more connected than ever before. But Yeah, that's, so, I'm glad you said that because it's exactly that way. Like we feel more connected to people, but then if you also really look at it, we're also feeling a lot of disconnection because mm-hmm. of that much connection, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Yeah, you we're know? only connected on like a visual, like, like yeah. a distant visual level. I mean, we're not... You know, we could. You know, I think all four of us can relate to this because we've been. We were all like on social media, I guess, for since really the dawn of social media. And I think we yeah. can all of us can relate to the fact we know a lot of people, but we mm-hmm. really don't know a lot of people. We know yeah. them basically. We know them. We know them by looking, if you want to say, it, through their front window, for lack of a better mm-hmm. phrase. Mm-hmm. Jason, you actually traveled all over the country to make this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to, uh, initially, like, it just started in Birmingham, but then when I saw what was going up in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, trying to open this place called the Snuggle House, I went up there, um, and then I also went to Boulder, Colorado, San Francisco, Rochester, New York, and Manhattan. Mm. Wow, wow. Look at you. (laughs) One of the most interesting things about the documentary and about the parties is the uh, the uh, the notion that there are rules. Basically the rules, you know, it's a very important part of both the cuddle parties and the cuddle businesses because it not only really sets clear boundaries so that people understand like, okay, this isn't a sexual kind of thing. There's only certain things we can do. And especially in the cuddle parties, you have to specifically ask, you know, of what you're going to do. So you're not just going in and touching someone. But you're you're going in with intent and asking. So it actually mm-hmm. helps with, because a lot of people feel, have difficulty asking for what they want, which is something you can learn from cuddle parties. Um, but then feeling okay to say no, you know, and not having mm-hmm. to qualify it. Like you don't have to, you know, because someone may want to come cuddle you, and you may have all your reasons why. It may not have anything to do with that person. But you can just say, they teach you to just say no, and you don't have to provide a reason. Because how many times in our lives do we, like, say no to something and we feel like we have to qualify it because they're going to take it the wrong way but it really might just be our own boundaries or our own comfort levels with things and they really teach you about that so it's it creates a safe environment they use that word a lot especially in cuddle parties so that you can feel comfortable that you're not going to have to do anything that you don't have to do you know so and some people i've seen come to cuddle parties they don't cuddle at all they actually just uh, come there to practice saying no or just to kind of be in a community of people. So it's not always just about the cuddling and the intimacy, but, you know, about just being connected with, with other people. And, of yeah. course, it helps you. It helps certain people accept the word no. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's the deep question, Jason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, I, can't wait. I, I mean, I talk, I talk to a lot of I talk to a lot of filmmakers, and particularly if 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 it's a very immersive uh, process, 
that in which they make their films and they feel mm-hmm. very connected to their subjects. They always yeah. leave the project and it somehow enhances their life or informs their life in a different way. What what did this mm-hmm. process? What did it teach you? What did you take from it? Oh, it was huge. I mean, it was and because I've talked about it a lot how transformational it was because I was I was probably coming off one of the worst situations I'd been through, you know, I'd been through like losing my corporate job and even in the couple months, the last couple months of that job, I was dealing with, you know, the drama of never knowing like if I was going to have a job the next day and people that I found out were manipulating me, you know, so I, I was like in the worst possible place for like how I viewed humanity at that time, mm. you know, so, so this that. film, yeah, that. yeah, and this, and I had just started this film basically when that happened. Um, and it was really, it was right at the time that I got let go that I found out about the Madison, Wisconsin business. And I, you know, I'd just gotten fired and I was like, well, you know what? I can just get on the road and drive up there now, you know, and, and it just grew from there. And so meeting these people and kind of seeing, you know, all the kinds of things that they taught me, uh, through that, it was just transformational. And really, you know, I talk about it saving my life and it literally did. I mean, it just, it really changed me so much, you know, because I just saw kind of a different, not only just like a different perception of humanity, but it really, I felt like I was embracing being a filmmaker for really the first time. You know, right. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to balance like the corporate job and the filmmaking stuff, which I'd been doing for the last, you know, 10 years up till about then, but now I could really fully embrace it. And that, that was just huge for me. I always I've, te- I, I've seen story. that in you. I mean, I've seen that. <laughs> no, no, but I am well, up you, to it, Jason, in, in this regard, because um, we were going through the same thing, and mm-hmm. um, a job work, work related at least. And I always like yeah. to look at your story as very inspirational. Mm-hmm. Uh, always, Absolutely. I really, yeah, I mean, really inspirational. I mean, I always went to your page like every day just to see what you were up to because it mm-hmm. gave me a lot of hope. So um, I, I know, do that for just sure. because I'm a stalker. But uh, well, yeah, I realize that. I mean, but, I mean, it's a whole other reason that Jamie me. does. <laughs> I even sent you a message, you know, because we were going through, you know, you know, about, you know, you worry about, like, will you ever see a paycheck again? Well, thanks, man. I and also, was, I also find inspiration of just you, cha- you, you know, I mean, I assume this is your first feature, at least. Uh, so well, first, you, this first documentary. First documentary. That I okay. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So. So you moved over from narrative to documentary. So what was yeah. what was that transition like? I loved it. I mean, I, I I've fallen in love with. I mean, I've always loved watching documentaries, but just make it from the standpoint of making them. I love the fact that, like, especially with Cuddle, I really didn't have an idea what the finished film was going to be. You know, it because it just kept kind of growing and transforming, and I just knew it in my mind. Like, I need to because I was the only one making a film about this. And I felt like once I found out about these cuddle businesses, I was like, I need to get kind of the full picture of this. So I just kind of kept going on faith, you know, to make these trips and try to get as much people in it, you know. So I love that, that you know, the not having to prep as much like you have to do to do a fiction film. I can just get my camera out and, you know, film an interview and go do another one and film this and film that. Of course, it creates a new challenge when you've got tons of footage and then you have to make a film out of it. But mm-hmm. I, I loved it. I love that process of discovery about, especially starting with something that you think is going to be one thing. Because you hear about it all the time with documentaries, like they started out doing one thing and then it became a completely different kind of film. Well, I and always say on the like show that, that the best documentaries are the ones that, that are sort of a journey of discovery for the filmmaker. Yeah. And you can actually you can actually feel the um, <clears throat> feel mm-hmm. the, that specific energy going through the film, you know, as yeah. opposed to... Uh, movie maker who might be making a movie that they know the subject from top to bottom and they're just mm-hmm. uh they're really just organizing the information uh right. uh you know doing it doing it this way as a as a as a journey of discovery uh really creates creates a different feeling a uh, more engaging yeah. feeling i think <clears throat> yeah. as opposed to you know how Alex Gibney does it so Jason, I knew you were going to say that I knew that was <laughs> I like Alex Gibney, damn it. <laughs> I, I completely agree with I completely agree with Dean on that. That's that's the rush of the documentary <laughs> form for me. Um yes. so but one more question about the process of making it for me because mm-hmm. you're entering an environment that these people probably feel very protective of. It's yeah. a mm-hmm. it's a safe nurturing environment. Was there resistance to you entering that world with a camera? 
Well, I wouldn't say so much resistance, uh, but it did take a lot of preparation. Uh, you know, because there were, the the most difficult part was it wasn't too hard to reach out to the people that were that own these businesses or doing the cuddle parties because they were very much receptive of it. You know, they they knew what I was trying to do with the film and and they really do want they you know to have it portrayed in a light that shows it for what it is because every time one of these businesses open they deal with a lot of negative press or people making fun of it and things like that. So, but the tough part was trying to find people you know, like actual people there, like at, whether at a cuddle party or something like that, that would do that because, yeah, it is very intimate. It's very, you know, and there is still kind of this kind of strange kind of thing attached to it. Like someone says, I went to a cuddle business, you know, people might snicker or something like that. So it took a while before we could get people to agree to appear on camera. And even the filmed cuddle party, you know, was actually the last thing that I filmed and because it took, you know, a few months mm. to really get that together and get a group of people that we're fine with being filmed. So it it was tough. You've been to a lot of kind of uh conferences and and, and, mm-hmm. and various road shows and things with this film with marketing merchandise. Yeah. It's been a big a big process for you. Yeah, I mean it, it like it, I finished it in about January of the first cut was done in, in well, in February of 2014. And I was so anxious to get it out there because one of my biggest fears was that somebody else was going to make a film about this and I knew for the longest time that I was like the only one doing this. So you know, I, I I rushed through editing. I mean, I did a quick edit for it and was really trying to work to get it out there. And it and it took a while. And then it it ultimately, you know, came to uh, the Filmcom event in Nashville that I went to, that I'd been going to for a number of years, where they actually bring in you know executives looking for uh, projects. And I promoted Cuddle there and met actually three distributors that were interested in it from that. Um, where I had I had a direct pitch session to like a whole room full of executives, which is pretty damn nerve wracking. You know, that was the first time I'd ever like pitched pitched to a room like that. You know, pitching one on one, I'm usually a little better at, but like pitching to a whole room of executives, that was that was pretty tough. Mm-hmm. So I had three that were interested. Yeah, I had I had three distributors interested, and then um, two really didn't follow up much after that, and then this one that I that I met was like really really interested in it and had a lot of great feedback that actually kind of helped in the next edit for it. And then it was. Then they offered me the deal, and then it just took another nine months of negotiating <laughs> to kind of wow. try, to get. Yeah, it took a long time. Um, thankfully, I had an entertainment attorney friend that helped me with this because I, you know, they they give you all this legal paperwork, and I I give it a once read through, and I'm like, well, eh, sounds pretty good. You know, <laughs> I get an attorney right. that goes through it and says, whoa, you got to watch out for this and this and this, and I'm like, oh, holy shit, I'm glad I'm glad you uh, told me about this. So it no, it took a lot to just. The inter- the oh, it is. I mean, that's very important because there's so many people yeah. I know that don't do any of the things that you're talking about right now. First of all, you went yeah. to yeah. a national pl- Nashville, the national place, because there are mm-hmm. so many people that don't know these things to do. Um, they just think if they make yeah. a movie, they will come. Um, it's it's yeah. not mm-hmm. like that. You really have to be very aggressive. And mm-hmm. but the thing about the attorney is very important. That's something I've talked to um, with a lot of people about. And I don't think yeah. re- people are really aware of that. So that's really good that you can offer that advice. Um, yeah, it's it's huge. I mean, it's because when you when you're about to sign away, you know, like your film that you've slaved over and worked on, you know, you you want to make damn sure that like, and especially this deal, this wasn't like a direct sale. This is like a an ongoing thing where I get percentages of the of the sales, and and which I kind of like. I like that that you know I'm I'm still going to get to be kind of actively involved in like helping mm-hmm. promote it and things like that. So. That's kind of better than just a one, just sell it off and then, you know, because I was able to still have input on the DVD artwork and things like that, in which they pretty much stayed with what I had been putting together because I'd, I really created a whole brand for this thing. I mean, it, mm-hmm. and the subject matter really lent itself to that. Like, it, it really, mm-hmm. you know, this was something I could have a lot of fun with. Like, when, when I went to the Filmcom event, you know, I even, I even got an award for the booth that I made because we did, like, free hugs in the booth, you know, <laughs> and and people wanted to come by and say, you know, I, there was a guy that came by that teaches like marketing and things like that and was saying, you know, I really would like to profile, you know, your booth for really showing how to, you know, market yourself really well. Right. Because um, I, I tried to do a lot of different things that would really kind of help promote it. Because I, I recently had a, someone asking me about that, like how I did that whole campaign. And I said, well, it, the subject matter lent itself to that. You know, like some yeah. subject matters probably wouldn't be as easy to market like that. But this one, you know, because we had fun with it and, you know, it's it's something that's kind of this more uplifting kind of film, which that particular year at Filmcom, there wasn't a whole lot of, 
you know, there's a lot of horror films, you know, things like that. So there wasn't a lot of just uplifting. Tend to be, plus documentaries just tend to be, <laughs> by nature, kind of, uh, kind of, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. dour. I mean, and they're they're you know obviously great movies, a lot of them. Yeah. But uh, you know, they're they're very serious. You know, yeah. kind of easy. And to next promote. year, I'm going to the film con with a horror movie where my main villain, his name is Cuddle. So it's <laughs> the cuddler. He, he the just hugs you to death. The cuddler. <laughs> you know, there is there is actually like a couple of horror films. Like I think one is called Cuddle Party. Actually, I, you know, because I I set up a Google alert to get, like get noticed on anything that has to do with like cuddle parties. And I think one time I came across like a horror film called Cuddle Party. <laughs> God, that'd be a great double great double bill. bill. Yeah, that yeah, would be a great um, double bill, wouldn't it? <laughs> go to thecuddlemovie.com. dot com. You can read all yes. about Jason's film. Support independent filmmaking. Support our good buddy Jason because I mean yes, Jason's been a part of our family for years and years and years. <laughs>